Hello, so I'm Cedric Schwer and I will uh, present you how to avoid field methodological and observation biases prior to social network analysis. Social network analysis is a powerful tool to understand sociality aspects such as the role of members inside their group, the pattern of interaction and association, the information transmission, or the overall network structure and property. And social network uh, analysis can also help for conservation of species. However, the data has to be well connected. I often hear some stuff like, I did not know how much time I observe individual, I did not score the data for male, I don't care about juveniles. But all this uh, way to analyze and to collect the data have impact on social network analysis and your results. So the data collection protocol has to be adapted to social network analysis and not the converse. And for instance, male and juveniles highly influence the patterns of transmission, density, and so on. So here we propose several techniques uh, to avoid observation biases and be sure that results given by SNA are reliable, meaning free of type one or type two errors. So the first question to ask you are going into the field is, do I score the right behaviors? So what pattern do you want to study? First, you have to ask to wonder uh, this aspect. Is it association or interaction? Is it agonistic or affiliative? And we work on this aspect in this uh, paper. We show, for instance, that the uncertainty of ad lipidon grooming and play matrices were less than uncertainty of focal matrices meaning that the way you collect data is important. We show also that the grooming and play network constructed from ad libitum and focal sampling were very similar and co highly correlated, meaning that in some way ad libitum can be used to uh, collect this kind of behaviors. We also improve the certainty of both grooming and play networks by pulling focal and ad libitum matrices in organ to have more reliable data. The second question you can ask is whether you use the best method to avoid the disturbance of animal behavior and interaction, because when you are on the field, uh, you, you disturb the behavior of animals and uh, you don't observe all animals. So the first question you can ask, you can wonder is where you are located towards animals. The second question you can wonder is if you, are, if you are scaring some animals and if you are conducting some alteration of some behavior or interaction. And then uh, you can wonder which method to use and how animals are habituated to yourself. If you can use some camera trap, for instance, or if you can use some robots, as is more and more done today. With animals, they are less, can, less scared by robots uh, than by humans. Another question you have to ask is if you observe equally of group members. If you can observe all animals in the same way, if you can, uh, for instance, have uh, the same number of hours uh, of focal sampling per individuals, you don't have to use uh, correction and you don't have to calculate association uh, indexes. But if it's not the case, if you don't have the same number of scans, if you don't have the same number of focal animal sampling, if you don't uh, observe all uh, animals at the same time, meaning that some individuals were not present when you observe uh, some other uh, group members, you have to use association index. And this association index, as for instance the CIPA ratio, the half rate ratio, and the twice rate ratio. And here you have some references indicated how you have, you have to use this kind of indexes, and which is the best according to which condition uh, of observation you have. Then you have to use the good sampling methods. I think you all know the different sampling method details in uh, Atman. You have the focal samples, sampling. Uh, the focal sampling is not advised for the rare behaviors. Uh, but it can, can be good when you have a high number of individuals to observe, uh, if you have time to observe, of course, 
you have the add epitom sampling. Uh, it's often used uh, for rare behaviors, and uh, we say that you cannot mix add epitom or you cannot use ad lipitum sampling when you have a high number of individuals uh, or you have to observe for a long time because you, can, uh, you cannot control for which individual you observe and you, how, how much time. But you, you, you could see uh, with uh, the study before that uh, uh, it's quite a good method. You have the behavioral sampling. It's not advised with the large group size. Uh, for instance, and you have the scan sampling, uh, which is not advised for the large group size and never for the rare uh, behaviors because you cannot observe all individual at the same time and you have to use some correction. Study replication is uh, so important. Uh, indeed, the studies, the single study generally fail to predict effect size correctly and you have a large number of false or um, positive or false negative. The larger sample size also render effect size estimate even less accurate. However, by contrast, multi-site or multi-groups uh, studies includes as few as two or four size group increase coverage probability by up to 40 to percentage points without a need for larger group size. So it's important of having several different samples, several groups to observe several sites uh, because it's a lot to make some uh, generalization of your results. When you are going to, 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 to make some SNA, you have to understand what is a social network analysis. A social network analysis allows to uh, measure the social structure of the group. Uh, for instance, uh, here you have a link between the different individuals and you can calculate the density you observed and you have the individual centrality is how much individual are central into the groups or uh, this one is much more central but this one because it's more connected and is more linking all individuals you can also uh, study the pathway of transmission meaning that if it's this individual learns something you can see which pathway you observe for this individual to learn the same behavior in order to know exactly which measure you have to uh, use according to what you want to do. Uh, we published a paper in the methods in ecology and evolution, and we make some decision tree to allow you to uh, use the, the best uh, measure. For instance, here I examine an interaction patterns between the individual of the group. Uh, if you want to know which room, uh, which in individual interact, uh, you have to go there. But if you want to examine how the way individual interact, you have to use transitive templates. And there, if the weight of interaction uh, or issue situation are measured, you have to go there for yes. If individual characteristic are categorical, you have to go where? To go there with yes. And you can use weighted categorical assertivity and so on. We use the same. Uh, decision tree for individual metrics to know exactly what you have to uh, to do and we do the same for the global metrics where you can see here which global metrics you can use according to which uh, question What is important when you use social networks analysis is uh, the fact that in the data are uh, dependent and are not independent, meaning that age, dominance, and centrality are often linked with dominant individual being old and being central. But you don't know exactly uh, the, the, the causality uh, in this uh, effects. Moreover, the calculation of the centrality are not independent from over individuals, over centrality, meaning that they are relative. And if you change the centrality of one individual, you change, you will change the centrality of another one. So in order to solve this, you have to use permutation, but this permutation are dependent of the, the of, or association or interaction for association is pre-network permutation for interaction it's network permutation 
Uh, however, this permutation can lead to a high rate of false positive and false negative, and other solution exists. And you have here, for instance, a paper uh, promoting some other uh, solutions. So here you can see the number of false uh, negatives with permutation, and here it's a number of false negative to zero, so it's correct, and here to 90 or 100 percent, uh, so it's more uh, with um, uh, high degree of uh, females and uh, some uh, uh, high female sex ratio, uh, low sex ratio. And here, so this is for the pre-network and this is for the node uh, network. And here, this is the probability to have false positive compared to the female observation case. And you can see that uh, this probability is decreasing with the female observation bias. Here, you also saw the, the false positive with permutation. And you can see that you have also a high rate of false positive in pre-network permutation in, and a high rates of false positive in network permutation. So the solution to this BS result are the use of linear regression for testing while adding controls factor to account for potential bias, but you have some limitation. So you can also use uh, both pre- and, and network permutation processes to estimate the deviant from randomness. It's a new paper, and you have still some uh, limitation. And uh, now Sebastian Souza is, pro is uh, proposing a new uh, index, a global index, where there is no limitation and no biases to, to, to use it. We also uh, built a package in R, uh, uh, all-in-one tool uh, package, in order to, to do all analysis in, in, in only uh, one tool and to make it uh, easier uh, to do. It's called ENS. So here it's uh, the way uh, ENS is uh, working. Uh, either you are using individual association, either you are using individual interaction, you can calculate node position, interaction pattern, network structure, you can compute the node matrix, making the node label permutation and use the statistical test, or in the same way you can calculate some metrics here, either dyadic or global metric, and use a uh, statistical, statistical test, and the same way uh, of uh, doing with uh, individual association uh, measure. And then you can compare uh, different groups or different uh, periods. So to conclude, uh, we hope to provide a guide to uh, for everyone uh, to follow uh, before going to the field in order to come back with a rigorous uh, data set. And this is important ethically for scientific research as uh, well as for the disturbance of uh, animals uh, in the field. Thank you very much.